Sorry, you guys. So I have to cut my AC off when I record videos because you know how you can hear the AC. So I'm literally melting right now. But it's okay because I'm helping y'all. I'm helping y'all. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to this newest video from Speak From The Heart. This video will be for all of my SLP students, grad and undergrad. I just want to take a minute to say if you are in graduate school or undergrad, and if it's hard right now, I know it's summer, but some of you guys may be taking summer classes, please keep pushing, please keep going. It's tough for a reason, the reward is so worth it, okay? Just a little tidbit. So today I'm giving you guys five of my favorite tips that I used as a student, especially in graduate school, that just helped me to retain the information a bit better and be able to apply it the way that I am now as a speech language pathologist. So again, five tips. I will include some little inserts in certain parts of the video um, to help you guys see exactly how I use them and then we will talk a little bit more about it. So let's try and make this quick, Lauren. Don't ramble. Don't ramble. All right, tip one, repetition. Okay, this one's probably self-explanatory, but I really believe in the power of repetition. And it's really funny because that's actually a memory strategy that I give sometimes to my cog patients, my cognitive patients. But when you are constantly repeating information, especially information that has to be regurgitated on an exam, that constant repetition, hearing yourself say it, will help it to kind of solidify your mind a little bit better. So for example, let's say my dysarthria class, and we had an assessment on all the types of dysarthria and the characteristics of the dysarthrias, and I would literally repeat it to myself. Flaccid dysarthria, spastic dysarthria, hypokinetic dysarthria, hyperkinetic dysarthria, and I would, I would read each one, like not even trying to do it from memory yet, but I would just repeat all of the symptoms, all the signs, so that way I'm like, I'm hearing myself, and that repetition is helping again to help me recall it for the exam, and that way when I got to the exam, I could hear myself repeating, okay, flaccid dysarthria, mono pitch, mono loud, weakness, um, all of that, so it, it definitely helps, and I say this works for every, um, class or course that you may be taking. So number one, repetition, do it. It will change your life, it will change your exam game, all of that, okay? Number two is kind of similar to repetition, but this one is recording and listening. So this really helped me a lot when I was studying for my comprehensive exam. So what I did was I would read out my answers or my responses and I would record myself on my phone. So I would record my responses and then I would play them as if they were a song. So on my way to my externship, I would listen to my responses. So, you know, my aphasia response, I would listen to the whole thing. But let me tell you guys, when I got to comps, I was, it was just like I had put my headphones on and I was listening to my response again. So that kind of, that repetition again, but this time it's outside of yourself. You're not actually saying anything. You're purely listening and kind of attending to that information and helping it to recall, helping you to recall it a little bit better when it comes time for your exam. So that's a really great one. I really recommend that. And just, you're just recording it. You're just, you're saying it again. You don't have to do it from memory just yet, but just reading out the information. Make sure to record yourself and play it, whether you're in the car, if you're just relaxing, want to hear, if you're at the gym, maybe listening to it probably won't give you like a pumped up workout, but you know, at least you know how to identify the aphasias, you know, it's a priorities, priorities. <laughs> Number three is rewriting the information. And I use this from undergrad all the way to my very last exam in graduate school. And let me explain to you why I think this is genius. I don't think that it's backed scientifically or it's evidence-based, but I really liked it and I used it. So I would, you know, take the PowerPoints that the professors would give us and I would rewrite everything, everything. I rewrote it because for, in my mind, I felt like that reinforced the information because not only was I studying it, I was, you know, not only was I repeating it, I was physically writing it. Is like exactly how I would if it was on the assessment. I mean, I don't know if this makes sense, but it really helped me. And again, not only am I reinforcing it by writing it, but I'm seeing it again. I'm seeing the information again, even if I'm not verbally saying anything. It just allows me to get exposed to the information again. So not only do I know just how to copy it, I am also internalizing it so I understand the information. Because let me tell you, 
in undergrad, you know, sometimes I would just memorize it, but not really know how to put it to use. Obviously, I wasn't treating clients, but it's a different ball game in grad school. Not only do you need to under, you know, be able to regurgitate the information, you need to be able to understand it and apply it to a patient. So that's why I really like the, the rewriting the information because it just allows you another chance to be exposed to that information and a greater chance that you're able to really understand how to use it. And number four is color coordinating. I will actually insert a clip right here that will show you how I color coordinated my notes. I still have them. Why wouldn't I? I still refer to my notes. All right, someone's flaunting their sports car. I see you. All right, here we go. All right, everyone. So just to give you a, a little more of an example of some of these study tips. So if you can see here in the background, this is actually a PowerPoint from my neuromotor disorders class I took. I want to say it was, I think it was in the summer of my second semester. I can't remember. Or summer of my second year or summer before second year, I believe. But anyway, so these are the notes I took in class, like as the professor was going through the notes that I actually wrote um, on the PowerPoint itself. When I got home, I rewrote everything. And this is kind of how I rewrote it. So I had my handy dandy blue notebook. This was like, this notebook just has been through some things, y'all. <laughs> um, but you can see how, if it focuses, come on. There we go. Everything is written in a different color. So every topic, whenever the topic changed, like right here we're talking about the hindbrain and the cerebellum. Um, below here we're talking about the brainstem and the different parts of the brainstem. Everything was a different color because for me visually it was so much easier for me to recall this information knowing that everything was a different color versus if everything was all black and white. And it's also just a fun way to, you know, use cute pens in grad school. <laughs> So, like you can see, everything is a different color. And I still refer to this notebook because it's easy to forget these little minute, um, I wouldn't even say little, I mean these are pretty uh, major things that are going on within your brain, but it's easy to forget them when you start practicing because you don't have to recall this information. So I do still refer to this, um, but again, everything is written out. All my diagrams I rewrote, like the different pathways. Um, every single thing is written out and color coded. So, yes, there you go. Little example. So, yeah, so you can see, I mean, it's really funny. So I write, I write very hard. Like I write on the paper very hard. I always have my papers curl up. So I had to laugh at myself that now, you know, three years later, you can't even read some of the notes because I wrote so hard. But it, again, I am also a very visual learner. So seeing everything separated by color, again, helped me to visualize it. Like I know, okay, dysarthrias are in purple, aphasias are in pink, um, treatment techniques are in blue. So having that separation helped me to recall that information versus if everything was in black pen. Like I specifically got really cute pens and different colors. So everything was a different color and it stuck out to me and helped me to recall that information come exam time. Lastly, teach the information to someone. I did this religiously, okay? Even if you don't have friends, if you don't have friends or anyone to, or like a roommate or a spouse, if you have a pet, I mean, the pet's not gonna say anything if you mess up. It's, it's really not. So I always say teach it to someone. Pretend like you are giving a lecture about whatever you're learning about. So for example, if you're learning about voice disorders and different types of voice disorders, like go through each one. One is vocal fold paralysis. You know, what is Ranke's edema? What are polyps? What are nodules? And really like say, okay, so this is a nodule and this is a polyp and this is what it does and this is what it causes to the voice. This is, this is the impact that it has on the voice. And go into detail, pretend like you're a professor for a day. Because again, you're allowing yourself to understand the information and you're allowing yourself to be able to recall the information and, and just get a better understanding. So again, you're not just memorizing it, you're understanding it. You're able to teach it to someone else. I did this all the time. I, I think it's a really great strategy um, because you think about it, if you're just reading information, I mean, yeah, you can keep repeating it to yourself. You can record yourself. But when you teach to someone, you're taking your 
studying game to a whole nother level. Like you're taking it from here to here because again, you're, you're reinforcing the fact that you can understand the information versus just being able to regurgitate it. And that's why I feel like now I, I understand my patients a bit better. I can understand etiologies um, as far as strokes are concerned. I can more so pinpoint what types of dysarthria my patients have versus just dysarthria or what type of aphasia or what's really going on with their voice when they come into me. What's causing that hoarseness? Because I did take the time to study diligently, especially in graduate school. So. I would definitely, definitely recommend these five tips. Um, obviously, this is not an exhaustive list. Some of them may not work for you, but these all worked for me and I definitely wanted to share. I wanted to make some more student-focused videos. So as always, please leave me a comment. If you have any questions, reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram. I will put those links right here or maybe up here. I'm not sure yet. I never know like where I'm going to put things. So. It'll be somewhere in the, in the video. Um, and thank you so much for tuning into this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. My channel is growing and I'm so excited. I am so appreciative of all the support. And I love getting feedback from you guys. If there's any ever anything that you want to see that's not already on my channel, please reach out to me and let me know. I know how it is. I know the SLP student struggle. SSS, hashtag, triple S. I know it y'all, I know it. So I'm always here for you as a speech language pathologist, as a mentor, as a friend, whatever you need. If you just need to vent, I'm here. <laughs> so thank you again for tuning into this video. Share it with your friends and I will see you in the next one. Bye.